So I'm going to start with uh, a little bit of a background on the challenge that I think you all probably recognize right now. But then my vision for how we, my personal vision for how we need to be approaching it. And then I'm going to talk about the role of the Center for Sustainable Food Systems. What it is, what it does, what it can do. And I think that's a lot of the reason why we're all here today is to talk about what it can do. And then uh, planning for the, the next five years. We're going to talk about, I'm going to outline the, the plan for the plan, what we're going to do in terms of strategic planning and the timeline for that and how we hope you will be involved. Um, so I've, I've been at this as in agricultural research for over 20 years now. Uh, I work mainly on farm, on the soil, uh, my role has been to provide farmers with actionable research to address uh, the challenges of, of climate change and to reduce their impacts on the environment. Um, I think all of you recognize, I hope all of you in this room recognize that our food system is in the center of multiple converging crises. And I think here in BC, We've observed those crises come to fruition over the last few years. These uh, events of wildfires, droughts, uh, floods that have been long predicted by scientists, we're now observing in our province. We, our, our farmers now can no longer rely on the climate patterns that they grew up with. They can no longer plan for what happened in the past going into the future. And at the same time, agriculture represents a sizable contribution to the problem. So in terms of climate change, agriculture is 10% of, of can, represents 10% of Canada's emission profile. Here in Canada, we're producing more than 700 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalents per year. And agriculture is producing almost as much as heavy industry buildings or electricity. At the same time, we're also contributing to the biodiversity crisis, to the water crisis. And I think for most of us, maybe those of us not in this room, the last couple of years have been a huge wake-up call. The idea of going to the grocery store and seeing empty shelves I think was a big wake-up call for many people, and if it wasn't, it will be. But this, this uh, sense of food insecurity is not new for many people around the world. And in fact, we can see over the last few decades, the real price of food is continuing to rise. And for only but a select few of us that are privileged enough to, to make enough uh, these prices are going to have huge impacts on uh, human well-being. So I titled this, this talk, Crisis, Opportunity in a Time of Crisis. And I do see real opportunity. This, the fact that these events are, I think, starting to wake people up mean that we have an opportunity now to really kickstart a transformation of our food system. We need to rapidly reimagine and reconstitute our food system. And I, I, I feel like to do that, you first have to have some sense of where you're going. You can't get somewhere without a map, some idea of where you want to be. And in my mind, I've got, uh, I don't know if it's a solid vision, but I've got some, some concepts that I, I think I want to be working towards. Uh, I want to make sure that no matter what, food remains central and essential to our culture, to our society, to our interactions with our families. It's got to be affordable. It's got to be readily available for everyone. We've got to make sure that food continues to be something that everyone can, can access. And I would really like to see our farmers, the indigenous people of our, our landscapes, to be seen as stewards of our global terrestrial lands that, and our waters, that uh, these, these stewards are, are respected for, for cultivating not just food, but many other ecosystem services and providing habitat for the many other species that share our planet. 
And then a, a final image I have in my mind, and this, this comes from asking my students every year, how many of you want to be farmers? And every year it's been ratcheting up just a little by little, but very few. I want all our children to want to be farmers or food producers to be stewards of the land, to be recognized as you know, the heroes of, 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 our, of our landscape. So what we need is urgent change. And I think many of us are working on this. We need innovative solutions, solutions that can be deployed immediately, solutions that have real uh, impact on farmers, on uh, the, the food system from uh, farm to fork. We need models. We need to be able to identify what is currently working out there, what farms are doing it right, what landscapes are producing the multifunctions that we need. We need to be able to identify those. And then we need to be able to share that information broadly. We need to be able to mobilize action through our education, through our policy recommendations, to ensure that those models get deployed everywhere. I see the Center for Sustainable Food Systems as an entity that can make real progress on these three activities, that we together can contribute to reimagining and re realizing the food system. So what, what is the Center for Sustainable Food Systems? So back in, the, in 2000, a group of students and faculty helped preserve this amazing piece of land as a food producing piece of land on the uh, UBC campus. And in 2010, uh, they developed a, a, a center, an idea, a uh, cultivating place to uh, imagine what the, uh, a group of people and this, uh, this amazing farm could do. And so this resides in the Center for, uh, resides in uh, the Faculty of Land and Food Systems. Uh, and it certainly is a way for the Faculty of Land and Food Systems to make progress on our faculty's uh, identified priority areas. So here are the five priority areas, including climate change, ending hunger. And the center can do this through our connections across campus and with our community partners. And I see the center as providing ways for us to ground our work on the land to be able to foster transdisciplinary work. So engaging with the people that actually need science uh, to develop new strategies. Uh, we have the, the possibility to providing much more support for knowledge transfer to ensuring that our farmers and policymakers and eaters understand their options. And importantly, I feel like we're training future leaders. So it's not just the graduate students that are on the farm, but we have kids programs out on the farm. Uh, we've got people from all over the world who are participating in what we're offering and, and then going back out to, to work in their own communities. And I think what we really are working on is building community. So what we have here is a big task at hand. And we really need to be able to not only work together, but we need to be able to lean on each other to, to accomplish this. I strongly believe that we are not putting enough effort into this, we as in society. There are only a few farms, research farms, around the world tackling some of these questions. There are fewer still that are working on regenerative organic production. And then I, I think that we're the only one that is at this scale on a, uh, a campus of our size directly adjacent to a major urban population. We are uniquely situated. So our opportunities I've prioritized here, there are probably many others, but I've prioritized these in terms of what I think we need to, to work on immediately and have impact towards. So climate mitigation, building resilience of our food system, decolonizing our, our approach, and working on all of the other various environmental impacts that our agriculture and food system have. And I see the CSFS 
as one entity moving solutions, models, and mobilization towards impact. And the reason that I'm prioritizing climate change and resilience is because of what's happening nationwide. So there is a growing interest in nat natural climate solutions. There's a recognition that particularly regenerative agriculture as a natural climate solution can help put a dent in our climate problem. So for sure, let this, natural climate solutions are not a sil silver bullet. What they are, though, is something that we can get underway right now, immediately, to start the drawdown, get the carbon dioxide out of our atmosphere, and then help us get to a net neutral situation by 2050. This is hugely ambitious. And we need all of the components, all of the ideas on the table working uh, simultaneously to, to achieve this huge drawdown. So a paper recently produced by uh, Ronnie Drever and Susan Cook Patton, I think mobilized quite a bit of interest in action on this. So what they did was they looked at a number of different uh, natural climate solutions and quantified the potential to reduce emissions by 2030. And you can see at the top here, uh, agriculture is the, the, biggest, the biggest contributor to the drawdown. Uh, they estimated that altogether these natural climate solutions could pull, uh, by 2030, 78 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalents out of the atmosphere. That's more than Canada's agricultural emission profile. Particularly interesting to me, and I think to, it should be to all of us, is the fact that these folks did an analysis not just of the emissions benefits, but they also identified all of these co-benefits. And this is where we have a lot of work to do. You see that the co-benefits in terms of air, biodiversity, soil, water, and the social benefits were not quantified in this paper. We need to be working on that, understand how to optimize or maximize these various co-benefits. So we've worked on some analysis of these natural climate solutions and others for the province. Amy Norgard from my lab at, uh, and team estimated using a, a, a suite of different solutions at various adoption rates that even if at a 50% adoption rates of these various solutions that we'd only get us back down to our 2008 emissions for agriculture. We need to be below this line right here. So we need a lot more to be uh, actualized. But importantly in, in BC, we have an opportunity to demonstrate all of these co-benefits, which I think are actually even more important for our, our systems. So the province has mobilized large amounts of money to develop programs, environmental farm plan, beneficial management practices, BC climate agri-solutions programs, and a, a, a number of dollars going directly towards research. We have an opportunity to capitalize on this momentum to make sure that the practices that are being instituted are not just for climate mitigation, that they're impacting those other areas of opportunities as well. So at the center, we are doing a lot. We have been doing a lot. And I highly encourage you to, to check out our annual reports that uh, Melanie Kerstarp was instrumental in putting together. Uh, we've got annual reports for, for a few years back. Uh, we are doing some amazing things in terms of research. Uh, and uh, Janet Moore will be working as our innovation and curator of research. We'll be working, hopefully, with many of you to, to build up these numbers that you'll see taken from, the, from our, our last report. Uh, Camille Dumont is going to be uh, leading a team on the, the education uh, portfolio. And you can see some of the statistics of what we're uh, producing. And then Tim Carter and his, his team are producing a large quantity of nutritious, organic, regeneratively produced uh, vegetables. So where do we go from here? Our last 
strategic plan was from 2016 through 2020, uh, I think it was. Uh, we've had some great leadership at the farm. Andrew Reisman, Hannah Whitman, uh, Claire Cullen have been leading the farm to do, and the center to do uh, some of these great things. But we need to do more. And so I'm hoping that you all will be interested in being involved in our strategic planning process to develop what that is. So our plan for the plan. <laughs> We're uh, hoping over the next few months to be engaging folks uh, in, in a strategic planning process. Uh, we will be identifying people to sit on an advisory uh, group. We will be engaging with staff. We will be engaging with uh, associates. Importantly, we, from that strategic plan, we will have a concrete action plan, which I hope you will use to hold me accountable as the director for the Center for Sustainable Food Systems. And then from these, we hope to have a clear vision of what happens on the land. So uh, I think Janet will tell us more about the process, but over the next few months, starting now, we will be hosting a series of activities to get a sense from you all and others uh, what we can do as the Center for Sustainable Food Systems. And what we, the, the primary objective of this is to get you engaged, get you excited about working together on, on these challenges. I see us as a team of teams. So we've had this uh, advisory board for the center for a long time, and I, I, I was on the advisory board, and I, I felt like we needed more. And so I see a team of teams where we have working groups that are doing, working together on research at the UBC farm, working on issues broader than the UBC farm, food systems research more uh, extensively, working on uh, the education portfolio, working on ways to build extension programs to develop programming for our students and, and uh, youth. Uh, working on a, a concrete way to clearly decolonize our, our system and to work on reconciliation, action. And then to continue to really build uh, strategic relationships with the province, with other institutions across the province, work with our, our other uh, institutions like KPU and UNBC on these problems. And then finally, to, to bring together a, a group of people to work on really stewarding the, the land. And there's probably a bunch of other working groups that I haven't thought of that we want to hear from you. Where do you fit in? What do you want to do? And you know, I think we can, we can work together to figure out what that looks like. And then I have a real vision for what the farm could be in terms of uh, demonstrating regenerative agricultural production. I think this has to be a shared vision, and it, it can't just be mine. And I see this as a continuum from just being an organic farm to being a model regenerative farm to providing realistic farm education to developing uh, and promoting regenerative management uh, practices on, through on-farm research. And this could be you know, a lot of what we're doing now, or it could be much more. And this is what I think we need. You know, we need this farm to be a model. And then finally, we, we have to, to, to work on some unfinished business. We've had uh, a number of interested donors who have contributed large amounts of money to developing facilities at the farm. And we, that, oh, I'm done. <laughs> I, I just have a couple more slides. Um, um, so we, we, we've had this promise of, of a building, a facility out there that can serve uh, in terms of education, in terms of research, uh, but we didn't do our, the consultation necessary to really get that underway. So we've, we've gone through that process now. We hope that we can actually uh, get this underway. Uh, we need to work on a new vision for what those facilities might look like. We've pulled these images out from many, many years ago. Uh, clearly, we, we need to work on, on what this, this could be now. Um, and then ultimately, what's our vision of, the, of, of our, our mission here? And 
uh, the space. So I'll stop there and answer questions before we move on to, to really trying to get, get some, some engagement and input from you all. So questions. <laughs> 